Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Panu and I am building this 50 meter liveaboard cruising sailboat here in Finland. This video is a special tech video for my current sailboat that I converted into electric a few years back. And it's all about building a new lithium iron phosphate battery for that boat. I originally installed a lead acid battery pack for that boat. Didn't have much money back then and they kind of have died during these four years. So they were pretty much unusable already. Fortunately, the prices for these lithium iron phosphate cells have been dropped dramatically. I would say one third of the price from four years back. And this spring I eventually ordered the cells and built the battery for the boat. And that is what I want to show you in this video. Maybe you can learn something from it and kind of get the idea how it's done. And this project is connected to this big boat because it will be an electric boat as well. Of course, much larger batteries, motors and everything. But still, the principle is pretty much the same. And I think this battery project is kind of a good practice for eventually making the big batteries for this boat. To keep up with the build of this boat, of course, remember to subscribe. And if you are interested to support documenting these kind of projects, you can go and check out the Patreon page and the merch store as well. But let's get started. All the footage is uh, filmed in uh, May 2024. My electric sailboat has a 48 volt system. That means that with regular 12 volt batteries, you need to connect four of them in series. A single lithium iron phosphate cell, however, is 3.2 volts. So for normal 12 volt battery, you will need four of them connected in series. That will create a regular 12 volt battery pack. And for my battery, I needed 16 of them. They are 105 amp hour cells and together they will keep a capacity around 5.3 kilowatt hours. That means that with one kilowatt of cruising power, which is around three knots with my boat, I can get more than five hours of motoring time. That would be something like 15 nautical miles, which is plenty enough for my need here in the lakeside. And if you don't know, my boat is located in Lake Bayern, which is the second largest lake in Finland, right in there. But lithium battery is more than just the cells. In order to keep them in shape for a long time and prevent overcharging and discharging, the battery will need a BMS, which stands for Battery Management System. They have been developing the last few years a lot as well. There's a couple of important features that work very well nowadays. First is temperature monitoring. One thing you should not do with lithium batteries is to charge them below freezing temperatures. That will damage the cells. By monitoring the temperature, the BMS will prevent that from happening. In some other environment, the over temperatures may be a problem, but up here in the north, no. Second feature is active balancing. The lithium cells I have are brand new A-grade cells, so they should perform very well, but they are still separate pieces and their inner structure is always slightly different from each other. That means that some cells will charge and discharge faster than others, and over time that can cause the individual cells' voltages to drift and that way affect the capacity, performance and longevity of the cells. By having active balancer, the BMS will balance the voltages between the cells. There is a lot of information about this over the interwebs, so I'm not going really deep into this subject right now. But I highly recommend to check out the channel Off Grid Garage. Andy has done amazing job for going really deep in the world of lithium-ion phosphate batteries, BMSs and other stuff regarding of those. Link to his channel is down there. And finally, the basic functionality of the BMS is of course to monitor the voltages of individual cells and prevent them from going too high or too low. For my battery, I purchased the JK BMS. It has a maximum amperage of 150 amps and it has a one amp active balancing. The maximum current for my motor, the three kilowatt motor that I have in my boat is around 75 amps. And my main fuse for the whole system is 100 amps. So capacity of this BMS is plenty good. And the final thing besides the cells and the BMS is of course some kind of case for the batteries. 
I made the box for the battery from plywood and cut it with my CNC. You can see behind there, it's self-made. Videos about that can be found from my channel. After a bit dry fitting, I glued together with some thickened epoxy and the battery will be placed underneath the cockpit and I made it so that the front face is openable so I can have easy access to the BMS and cells if needed. There is also a middle wall there to mount the BMS into. After a little bit of successful dry fit with the cells, I rounded all the corners and painted the thing with epoxy paint. I had left over and uh, I think it became pretty good. After the box was done, it was time to put the cells in there. I bought some thin rubber mat to fill the sides so that the cells wouldn't move around. Later I also added some plywood strips to the bottom and to the top to prevent the cells from sliding off from the box. When the cells were secured, it was time to start the wiring. The bus bars to connect the cells together were provided with them. They would look good and I used them. But before I could start installing them, I needed to add ring terminals to the BMS balancing cables. This BMS can handle batteries up to 24 S, which means there are 24 cells in the series, but I was using only 16. So I checked the instructions how the balancing cables needed to be installed carefully. The first wire is black, which is connected to the main negative terminal of the battery. From there, there is wire connected to each of the cell's positive terminals, and the last wire is then connected with the main positive terminal. With these wires, the BMS measures the voltages for each of the cells and also does the balancing. It's very important to install them right. Wrong install can destroy the BMS. I used small press ring terminals for these and I added the heat shrink that has glue on it and this will protect the copper wire getting moisture from the air. After the connectors were done, I installed the harness with the bus bars to the battery. The main negative will be on the upper left corner and the main positive will be on the bottom left. The BMS has these big wires on it all the power from and into the battery will go through them and it is connected to the main negative side of the battery. The blue cable here is the B- minus that is connected to the negative terminal of the cells and the black C- minus is the main negative out from the battery. This way the BMS can monitor and manage the currents going in and out from the battery. That way you can control the input and output individually so that the current can only flow in or out from the battery if needed. For connecting the big wires, I needed to put larger lugs on them. The wires on the BMS are American AVG7 something that doesn't really mean anything to me. The 20 square millimeter lug was slightly too small for those and the 25 square millimeters, which is the next size up, is a bit too large. But I used the larger ones and with the wire whacking press connection tool, it came perfect. Then some heat shrinks on them as well and they were done. One little issue with the BMS is that the wires that are connected to it are a little bit on the short side. I needed to put both of them on the same terminal and in a little bit of an anchor angle. So I needed to adjust the middle lid to be able to squeeze the wires on their places. The main negative was connected to a lug on the box from where I could connect the main negative cable out of the box. The main positive cable was connected directly on the battery terminal and brought out from the other side. On the boat, the negative side is on the left and the positive side is on the right, so they are on the corresponding sides of the box, of course. After everything was connected, I taped the main positive to prevent any accidents. I suggest not to do these kind of things on the metal table, in my case, a jointer table. One little neat detail is that this BMS now has an on-off button. All the older versions didn't have that and yeah, it's kind of neat to be able to put the battery on and off with the press of a button. And after everything was connected, there was a moment of truth when I switched the battery on for the first time. It worked and everything went okay and I was really, really relieved. The BMS is controlled by a Bluetooth application on the phone. There are some basic settings to be done at first, like a cell count, basic voltage ranges and temperature ranges. I'm not going to go into these settings here. If you want to get more into details of this kind of BMS, I should just go and take a look at the off-grid garage channel I mentioned before. 
Then it was time to take the battery to the boat. I had to take the motor out of the way because the battery box was just slightly larger than the gap between the motor and the cockpit floor. But I got it done and the box was actually quite heavy as well. This by the way needs to be remembered when doing the batteries for this large boat. The batteries cannot be prefabricated and then lifted to the boat. They are too heavy. There needs to be enough room inside the boat to be able to connect everything and to maintenance them on their places. My charger here is the old lead acid charger. And I was a little bit skeptical if that would work because the lead acid charging logic is quite different from lithium. But eventually I got the settings in the BMS set up so that the charging stopped at the right voltage and that the trickle charge voltage was actually very close to the optimal charging voltage for the lithium batteries so that the BMS can do its work for balancing the cells. So that was good and the charger worked just fine. By the way, if you want some more detailed explanation of the setup of the BMS, just tell me in the comments, I might do a separate video for that. Then it was just to put the boat in the water. Here in Finland, the sailing season starts in May and ends in November in latest. Although most of the people are not crazy enough to keep their boat in the water that long. And for the winter, the mast is taken off and the boat is stored under the tarp keep snow and ice off the deck as best as possible. So during the splash the mast needed to be installed again. During the trip to the harbor I did some initial testing with the motor. All the settings were not correct yet but I felt like there was more power available in the motor. I just might have been mistaken but it really felt that way that it was more responsive and the top speed was higher and yeah maybe the lithium just gives more juice. Although when putting the full throttle, it goes way over the nominal power of the motor, so I cannot use it that long. Other than that, it worked just flawlessly. I did some additional adjustments for the settings in the BMS and uh, tried a few different things, but now it's completely working and I'm so pleased with that. Unfortunately though, in late June, there was probably a thunderstorm in here <laughs> and actually my both chargers of the boat broke. I have the 12 volt battery for the fridge still separate from this system. It has its own charger and this lead acid charger. They both stopped working for some reason and only suspect is some kind of surge from the grid. So that was unfortunate. The boat is now pretty much unusable but which is more annoying is that actually something broke inside the motor. I'm suspecting the whole sensor which is the sensor that measures the rotation of the motor. It seems to be broken so yeah I cannot use the boat. There is the insurance claim coming shortly and I hope I can get it fixed in a couple of weeks but that was kind of annoying. Fortunately though the BMS and the battery seems to work just fine so no really big damage there. In conclusion the battery has been working great. We actually did one longer trip further north in June and the battery worked flawlessly no issues whatsoever. Although it was the coldest week of the whole summer and the heater was on 24-7 almost and yeah the capacity was totally okay and no issues. And with these good and bad news I will end this video right here. I hope you like it. It was a little bit different and I have actually whole footage of that trip I mentioned before and I'm planning to do sailing trip video out of that. I already published a 360 video of maybe half an hour of just sailing. Go and check that out and enjoy the mood. And the big boat project is gonna continue very soon as well. I've been kind of having a little bit time off from everything and uh, hopefully getting some work done there soon as well. See you later. Bye bye.